this is Neil Strauss, host of the hit true crime podcast, To Live and Die in L.A. We're back with a new season covering an intense and occasionally dangerous missing persons case that actually sent me down this rabbit hole of true crime investigations. From Tenderfoot TV, To Live and Die in L.A. Season 2 is available now. Listen for free on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Or binge the entire season ad-free on Tenderfoot Plus. Your life, your hopes, and whatever you were searching for at 1.15 a.m., it's really none of our business, and it shouldn't be anyone else's. Protect your privacy online for free with DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo. Privacy simplified. All right, George from North Philly is playing Stump the Millennial today for a four-pack of tickets to see the Phils and the Colorado Rockies Sunday, September 12th, 105 first pitch. All fans 15 and over receive a Phillies picnic blanket courtesy of Giant. George from North Philly, what's up, buddy? What's going on? How you doing? Good, I George. Believe this, I believe this is my first time calling in, so this is really, you know, well, honor to talk to you guys. Well, it's an honor to talk to you. So, Stump the Millennial, here's how we play. We're going to ask the Millennial Jack Fritz a question. He's going to think about it. You decide whether Jack gets it correct or if we stump the Millennial. If your guess is correct, you win. Make sense? Makes sense, yep. All right, George, hang on a second. Let's go, Jack. All right, Jack, you've been on a cold streak here, I believe. Probably. This is not going to be an easy one either. Gary Lee Maddox's birthday is today. Born September 1st, 1949. Happy birthday to one another. You know, a, a great Philly. Yeah. Great Philly. His first season with the Phillies, he was acquired from the San Francisco Giants in 1975. How many seasons did Gary Maddox play for the Philadelphia Phillies if 75 is counted as one season? I'm going to give you one. All right? One either way. So you can be off by one. All right, George. George in North Philly. Jack is in there. He's using his hands to count. (laughs) Does he get it correct, or do we stump the millennial? I think we're going to stump the millennial this time right here. Okay. Come on, Mr. Baseball. I'm rooting for you, George. All right, Jack. Gary Lee, what do you think? How many seasons for the Philadelphia Phillies? Well, so the big thing for me is I'm not sure if he was on the Wii's kit. I don't think he was on the Wii's kids. Okay. So I'm going to say that Gary Maddox played seven years for the Phillies. George from North Philly, you easily win the prize. Oh, Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, man. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, George, hang on a second, man. Thanks How many for listening. was it? 12. Really? Yeah. He played through 86. Yes. I didn't think he was on that Wii's kids team. Yeah, he wasn't a full time player at that point, had three hundred and twenty four at bats. I didn't know if I don't know if that's because of injury or because he was, you know, in his mid thirties or he was early already 30s. getting benched in the eighty season, so I was, you know He was. Dallas Green was messing with him. Yep. But uh Gary Lee was uh was a, a gold glover and a great Philly. Yeah. And when he was finished playing, he actually and this was on the Prism broadcast when Prism had the Phillies home games. Uh, it was uh Jim Barniak and uh Gary Lee Maddox. And then Schmitty did a year or two before he went to Florida. So uh, so Gary Maddox, and now he does the barbecue stuff. That's where I've seen him recently. Yes. He always has his barbecue cook-off. All right, well, congratulations, George. There you have it. Um, Joe Giglio is coming up uh, next with a full four hours. He was uh, scheduled to do the fantasy football draft for the WIP League tonight. Joe DeCamera actually texted Giglio and was wondering if he, he found a fill-in for his show because he was worried about the Fantasy League, the draft not happening. Joe actually thought that Joe would call out from work for the Fantasy League and find somebody else to work. Yeah. And Joe just said, no, I'll just do it while I'm on the air. Joe Giulio said that. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. Um, let's, um, let's give away our spot. We need to take a couple phone calls here. Oh, our, so Julie from Roanoke, Virginia, she was a top finisher last year. I believe she was the runner-up to get into the league. She came down on Friday to see us, and you weren't there, and she was very disappointed. Julie and Roanoke, how are you? How are you? Hey. What's up, Julie? Hey. Yeah, hey. I, I was so sad. I came oh. all the way from Roanoke to, like, visit you. We have met before, though. Uh, I, I did the autism challenge the first two years, and we've met there. But okay. uh, that was before I was uh, a caller. So oh, wanted okay. to, you know, yeah. Yeah, I'm but, sorry. I didn't know you were coming. It's all good, right? It's I would all not good. have taken off. Okay, yep. I'll be ready forget. next time. Yes, thank you. <laughs> next time, right? Yep. So here's the deal. Um, I'm a loyal Marks and Reese listener. Uh, I call in, uh, I would say, semi-frequently. 
Um, I only call in to your guys' show. Um, I don't call into anybody else's show. I take my fantasy football pretty serious, and I know, like, the, the callers believe her name was Marion before me. When Jack read off, like, the, the five things that annoyed him, I think I checked the box for all five things, but, you know, but that's okay. Um, that's a good thing. But uh, yes. I like to talk a lot of smack when I'm doing the, fo- uh, when I'm doing the football. Um, I also, much like Ike, I like to play around with the waiver wire, and I always, always, always make sure my lineup is set. In fact, so I used to live in Sacramento before I moved to Roanoke, one of the many places that I lived. Um, in 2016, I was training for a marathon, and I was in two fantasy football leagues. And because of the time difference, I had to make sure right around like 9, 9.30 a.m. Pacific that I was in a spot where I could stop to check to make sure nobody went out at the last minute on my lineup. Mm. And I was really scrambling if I had to make some changes in the middle of a run. Mm. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, I also, I mean, I think I'm kind of fun to be around, you know, just saying, you know. Would so. be fun as well. But, so smack talk, active on the waiver wire. Your lineup is always set guaranteed mm-hmm. and you're fun. Love it. I'm fun, Right. You know, and, you know, like I said, my loyalty to Marks and Reese, and I call in and I will continue to call in, um, you know, throughout the fantasy process. I'll probably even call in even more than I do now. Actually, I should call in even more than I do now if I'm lucky enough to get into the league. All right, Julie. You know, you're, you know you're a favorite of mine, so we will <laughs> – you know that. Yeah, All right. Me too. Me too. All right, Julie. Ah, I, got the, I got the one. Can I get some ice juice? Yes. Oh, that her helps. Up. Ah. They must be drinking that ice juice. And she was devastated when you weren't there on Friday. Yeah, sorry about that, Julie. It's all good. It's all good. You know, I'll be back in town um, for the Broad Street Run um, October 10th, so hopefully I'll be able to make it to Chiggy's, uh, what would that be, the 8th, to see you guys regardless. Okay. There. But, okay. Um, but, yeah. Oh, yeah. Once, I'm sorry. Once the season starts, we're at Chiggy's on Mondays. Correct. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yes. Yeah, we shift there. that's all Good right. Well, listen, that. listen, Julie, we, you are considered. Mm-hmm. We have one more to go here, which we will get to before the end of the show. Let's go to Frank in Philly. Frank wants to talk Ben Simmons. Uh, what's up, Frank? What's going on, fella? Yo. What's up, Frank? First, I'm chilling. I'm chilling, man. I wanted Ben Simmons just to be quiet. I didn't even want him when we drafted him because that was like we was getting a Ben's with, with a transmission that only going reverse because he don't shoot the ball. <laughs> So why? So I don't understand why. Like everybody's so mad, or he's so mad. Don't look. Like, I didn't want you here anyway. Well. And as far as Embiid go, it's a lot of things I, Embiid can do a whole lot better than use his Twitter fingers, like learn how to pass out a double team, or use better footwork in the paint. How about or that? Got get some goddamn heart. Don't nobody want to come here because this city has been tarnished forever. Uh, Johnny Marks, you might you might be able to uh, 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 you might be able to understand me, but ever since you won that championship, and then we traded Moses Malone the next season, the Sixers teams haven't been able to get no real talent here. Danny Granger didn't even want to come here when we didn't need to have nobody. Yeah, you think what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm, I don't can't remember what caller it was, but he said something that hinted towards it, and I kind of agree with what he said because we haven't had no real talent, or they haven't had been able to draft no real talent. Forever. This is the best chance that the that the team Frank and thank you has had since. I mean, listen, they they had the great run with Allen Iverson in, in uh, 2001, but as far as sustaining it, it felt like that the whole process and with Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons and the draft picks and everything else, they haven't made it battle of the second round yet. So, I mean, what 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 has really been accomplished here so far? Now Ben's going to demand out, and they're going to tell him that he has to he's leaving, and you take whatever you can get. Now you're talking about maybe draft picks and a player. Or something. This wasn't how it was supposed to work out here. Nope. It hasn't. Damn basketball gods. They're working against us right now. I'm telling you. I um I this Those I guess this is falling apart. This would qualify as sort of breaking news. I Reese. Sort of. I don't know if you saw news. Corey Clement uh, was released by the Giants. You remember he signed with the Giants in the offseason. They released yeah. him on cut down day. He has signed with an an NFL team, and it's his isn't it his childhood favorite team, Jack? Oh, uh, it sure is. Corey Clement, Super Bowl hero, signs with the Dallas Cowboys. I've been thinking about it a lot in the shower. Do you think think he's happier to win the Super Bowl or get signed by his favorite team growing up, even though he's from the area and his Philadelphia Cowboy fans? That's not fair. (laughs) 
he's looking for employment, and Corey yes. is a great eagle, and his dad is a great uh, listener to the Marks yes. and Reese League, and Mr. And Clement. And now his dad is a Cowboy fan. Just yes. like he always <laughs> wanted to be. It did work out for him, I guess, right? Uh, it got the Super Bowl in his hometown. Yeah, goes and signs you, yeah. with his favorite team. You got I the guess. best of both worlds. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> hey, yes. There you go. All right, uh, text line in a second. What he better not score a game winning touchdown against us. No. No. <laughs> no. Nick Foles throws it to him. Katie and Pittman. Katie. Katie, you're the last uh you're the last application for the Marks and Reeves Fantasy League. Go. Awesome. Uh you saved the best for last. All right. Um Ike, Ike, I met you at the Beach Blitz a few years ago. Oh man. Had um, a good time at that Beach yeah. Blitz. Cancun? Oh my God, it was Where do so we go? To Cancun? Yes, Where do we go? Cancun. Yes. In Cancun. What were the, the old ladies? Home. What were their name? Oh, the shot, shot the sisters. Shot sisters. Yes, I'm sir. a younger shot sister. Oh, yes. There you go. <laughs> um, it was me and my sister, and that's what that's the award we got, the shot sisters in training. But yes. <laughs> um, I came home, got my daughter a dog, named him Graham, won the Super Bowl the next year on Brandon Graham's trip sack. Yep. Um, Ike, I think me and your daughter have the same exact birthday, November 26th. You've said that on the air before. Yep, that is um, exactly it. She's th- my daughter's 13. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and hopefully to seal the deal, if you guys pick me and I don't win, I'll get a Marks and Reese tattoo on my back in honor of you, John. Wow. wow. <laughs> if you don't, don't do that deal. to yourself. <laughs> I've done, I, I have a, a, quite a few tattoos and I've gotten some some crazy tattoos for crazy reasons, so I'm not. It's not out of the realm. So for let's me. review. You were a a shot sister who was at the Cancun trip with Ike. You're a loyal listener. You had the same birth date as uh, Ike's daughter, and you're my, saying my daughter does. your daughter, daughter does. does. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and also yeah. that if you don't win the league, you'll get a Marks and Reese tattoo on your back. I almost want to not let you in the league just for that. <laughs> oh, darn it. I thought that was going to steal it. Yeah. Oh, man. It works for me, but, I mean, you know, John's a judge also. Though. Okay, I won't hold that against you, all right? It would be good for content. Yes. That was that's a, So you don't have to feel bad about your tattoo. I'm trying to. Right, she's trying to join no, with it, you. No, it's, yes. a, it's a good, it's a good yes. touch to your pitch. All right, Katie, uh, stay tuned and listen. Thank you. I don't want to make this decision. I, I want out of the decision. Yeah, leave, leave, leave it to the commissioner. Yeah, you make the decision, Jack. Cause, oh, thanks. Because Julie, Julie didn't get in last year. and, and I think I, she was in the year before. She was? Yeah. Are you sure? Pretty sure. I think she was in one year. Yeah. She's definitely been in the league before. Yeah. But, like, she, she's a great – I mean, they're great all great listeners. listeners. All, everybody that called in today is, is a great listener, loyal I mean, this to one's, us. This one's way tougher than anyone we've had. It really is. Yeah. There's been a lot of good candidates. Like, I, I, need, I need to be reminded of the candidates. Yes. No, 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 no. It's Wanda was in the year before. Was Julie in it last year? No. No, Who, Julie was second place last year. Right, so she was in the league. She was in the league. Right? No, she was, no, she was runner-up uh, last year. Okay. okay. Maybe she wasn't. That's what I'm saying. She was, I don't think she's been in the league. Okay. All right, this so, is only the third year of this? No, we've done it. We've yeah, done it more, but years, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure. All right, so Jack. But nothing go, matters about the show before I start producing it. Yeah, that's a good That's point. true. Yeah. That's true. We know that. All right, so so we have Julie from Roanoke Smack Talk. She's active on the waiver wire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's always fun. Marion in Abington who said she won the effing championship and she has passion and no one called him with passion like she did. Exactly right. Agreed. Lisa from Delaware City, strip sack fumble. And uh, she, um, I forget what else she said. Uh, D- uh, Lisa what? from Delco. She's from Ridley. She wanted Ike Juice. She loves, she has four kids under seven and she's the ICU nurse. Yes. Yes. That's tough. I think that's the one that I had at the top of my list. Kim is yeah. Kim's a big fan who had the Ike Reese jersey. Okay. Katie love from Pittman is the shot sister. Yep, love her too. Who's in Cancun. For yeah, you. a lot of Ike Reese fans. A lot of Ike Reese fans. Appreciate that. Which is good. Yes. And, Even has a jersey, and, which is a lot. And Leslie was a champion does, among men. That says a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, Lisa had the strip the stri- no, Lisa had the strip sack fumble on and the picture in the her picture bedroom, and then she yeah. had the picture of you too somewhere. Yes, on the phone. Yeah, on the phone. Yeah. yeah. All right, Jack, it's a tough decision, buddy. This is out of our hands. Do I get a vote? Yeah, you can have a vote. Yeah. I, 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 you, who, who, you, who are you going with? Um, is it Lisa? Lisa is the ICU nurse. Lisa from Rid- Delco, Ridley. Okay. Yeah. So there's two Lisas. There was the strip sack fumble picture, and then there was the ICU nurse with four kids under seven. Okay. Who, who listens to the show with their earbuds in. Okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't want to vote. 
Jack, yeah, you're that's what pick, I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's up, yeah. To, it's up yeah. to you. There's too yeah. many choices, good, great choices here. Yeah. We're putting it on you, Jack. I know. Yeah. I know. I Take know. care of this, buddy. I'm going with Lisa and Delco as the ICU nurse. It, it, listen, thank you to everybody. You and by the way, you can still there's still more choice. There's still more ways to get in the league. We have three is. spots left, I believe. And women aren't excluded. You're damn right. You are not excluded. We'll have three other ways for you to get in this league, including. My favorite caller. Yes. Oh. Yes, Ike Reese. We put him on the spot. The yes. at-large Ike he'll, Reese he'll, We'll make this a 15-team, 16-team league with that, that, <laughs> that one. That's coming up on Friday. Yeah, tw- we got to do them all on Friday with the game tomorrow because the, the Phillies play tomorrow at 1. So We, we got, will have some spots on Friday. game tomorrow? Yeah. yeah. Game's at 1. I didn't know. I thought we talked that about the it. the of the day? Yeah, they rained it out today. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I, I, Can I still set a tea time right now? You, but, it, yeah, might it might be a little, little wet, rainy, but yeah. um, Twitter questions today brought to you by Mark's Jewelers. Mark's Jewelers celebrating 40 years in business, 40 years of great memories. Visit marks-jewelers.com. Text line. Text line. Text line. Text line. Chuck and Mount Airy, please arrange to refill your blood pressure medicine. <laughs> your prescription has expired. CVS in Mount Airy. <laughs> Yeah, Chuck couldn't. Chuck was was he the first caller today? We went to. Yes, he yes, was. he was. He, he got, got, he got it started. Yeah, he was a good leadoff hitter. And today. people are still talking about him at five yes. o'clock. <laughs> yep, yeah, and and Mad Mike also. People are just calling Mike now. <laughs> yeah. The first name base is Mad Mike. What's next? Hey John, have you ever been kicked in the nuts by a guy shorter than you, Ronald in DC? <laughs> <laughs> I can't you let that on the air. I have not. I have not. Can we say that? There's not a lot of, yes. Oh, okay. I mean, yes. <laughs> I don't think it's an FCC violation. We do, you know, like a, if we. Well, I mean, I've never said that. I, mean, I, I, never, I don't think I've ever heard that either. Yeah, yeah. Like, On yeah, there's things that you, you can technically say that I wouldn't right. say, mm-hmm. right? But, you know, what's next? Losing to the Hawks would be a lot like losing to the Panthers at home in the last game at the Vet. Thank God that didn't happen. Greg and Voorhees. They're really starting to go after Ike Reese now. Well, it was the Bucks, not the Panthers. And they no, were in... no, it was the Panthers, too, the next year. The next year? Yes. Wasn't that in Carolina? No, that was here. Was it? Mm-hmm. And that, but that was at the new stadium. Yes. Yeah. First year there. That was the McNabb Broken Rib game. I remember. Greg. Greg. And uh, where did you say he was from? Mount Laurel? Mount Airy? Yeah. Voorhees, I think. Yeah. Greg Favors broke Donovan's rib in that game with that late hit. Late hit, cheap shot. Yep. The, uh, who was the running back that just ran over Mark Simino and Sean Foster? Yeah. Yeah. They had, they had Deshaun Foster and Stephen Davis. Yeah, they, they had a good squad. Good, yeah, they did. Hussein Muhammad, Steve Smith. Yeah, no, and, and the wide receivers were the wide receivers were good. The defensive backs were pushing yeah. were pushing the guys around. Yeah, that Gomer Powell, Jake DeLome at quarterback that everybody <sighs> couldn't believe. Oh, who, was, who was the, the Ricky Manning? Was it? Oh, yeah. Ricky Manning uh, Jr. Ricky Manning shoved, Jr. shoved Pinkston and Thrash around. Basically beat up our receivers that day. Yep. Yeah. Awesome time. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, thanks. What's next? <laughs> the Nats are so bad that the Phillies fantasy camp lineup with Joe to camera batting cleanup could take two of three from them. Mike in Birdsburg. Bang! Bang! <laughs> <laughs> they may win a game. Yeah, they might. I mean, the lineup last night wasn't that far off of a, of a Man, fantasy I'm camp. You, I, that, the bottom half of that lineup, I was like, wow. Yeah. Now they pulled it off, though. Hey, listen, they scored a lot of runs, <laughs> yeah. man. They hit, the bottom line is that they're playing some bad teams, and they're going to play some bad teams. They're going to beat the bad teams. Like I said earlier, hey, the rest of the league gets to play those teams as well. Damn right. They stack up wins, so why can't we? What's next, Jack? What do you got to say for yourself, little chump? I find it a bit concerning that Embiid knows who Mad Mike is. However, after yesterday's top five at five, who's less popular in the city, Joel or Jack? Tom from Abington. God, it's so many people DMing me about how angry. What was his top five Ro- yesterday? Ro- he doesn't like Rocky, statue. Oh, Didn't even get tweeted out and people were upset about it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He thought that was going to save you. Yeah. <laughs> it did. And then the Wildwood, the the, the the day before that, where you where I you, saw that one. I did offend all of uh, Wildwood. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, because you left them off the list completely. Yeah. Oops. Well, it wasn't just that; it was that I knew he left them off the list, and I asked him why. Oh, so I, I didn't get to hear the commentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Commentary wasn't wasn't <laughs> nice about Wildwood. I'll just say that. Oh, man. And I kept following up, like, yeah, but what's your problem with Wildwood, Jack? 
Made it impossible for him he not to you, say it. Yeah, he led you down to the, to the slaughterhouse. Yeah, yeah appreciate <laughs> it. Any more, Jack? Trust the process enabled a losing culture. That became learned behavior for fan and player alike. If you sow mediocrity, you should never expect to reap excellence. Therefore, you pay for what you get. Hashtag home sellouts. Scott from Delco. Oh. I thought that was Howard and Delco. Yeah, that was Howard and Delco, De- uh, Delco right? Yeah, I would have thought. Yeah, I'm not sure that Ben Simmons and the basketball gods are aligned as far as the process losing all those games. <laughs> problem was that they just didn't get the right guy. Yeah. That's the problem. Yep. Ben Simmons didn't get like the year that the year that they got the number one pick. Why couldn't it have been who was good those years they had that? Uh, Wiggins was wouldn't have yeah, been a good pick. Yeah, those guys didn't uh, turn out to be no. did any of those number one picks turn out to be anything? I mean, we took Fultz instead of Tatum. But Boston would have took Tatum. Tate, Boston, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, if they would have known Colangelo wasn't such a stooge, they, yeah. you know, they, they, I, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think any of those players actually turned out because even in MB's draft, we wind up getting the get best the best player, player right? Yeah, you, you got with the third pick. You got lucky that year. Well, I made the argument that over the over that time of the process. You can make the argument that the Sixers got the best player out of all those drafts. Embiid. Yes. Yep. Simmons. Well, Ingram. Yeah, you got Brandon Ingram. Yeah, I mean, Sim- uh, well, yeah, you could have took him instead of uh, or, or, Ben Simmons. But but he was the Ben Simmons, even though like like I, I remember he you. You were yeah. yeah. He was the consensus number one guy. Yes. Jalen Brown went three. Yep. He was a consensus number one player coming out. I just Booker was. The, I just didn't like his game. Booker was in the Okafor draft. Oh yeah, man, that's a pretty damn good player. Yeah, except like he was twelve. I mean, it's not like yeah, he, it's not like he went five. I think he was like the sixth man at Kentucky. Yeah, he came off the bench. Yeah, yeah. he came off the bench. Yep. So we, I get, we we would have had a fit. If yeah, they I drafted a, a bench player. Well, although that was the time where Hinky was just obsessed with getting assets yes. rather than yep. actually building. Yep. A but team. Porzingis and, and he hasn't turned out to be nope. anything. But he wouldn't work out for the team. Hezonia's been a bust. Collie yep. Stein's a bust. Moutier's a bust. Stanley yep. Johnson's a bust. Comiskey's a bust. Justice Winslow's a bust. Miles Turner, Trey Lyles, you have to go all the way down. Like when you're 13, you're not going to Devin Booker slid all the way to 13. It's not like yeah. the Sixers are going to take him there. Ogrefer's a bust. All right, couple phone calls. Tom in uh, Downingtown. Tom, go ahead. Hey Johnny Marks, I and I Reese, I love you guys championing uh, the Philadelphia fans, but thinking about it, who gets votes? Okay. First of all, if you're a Philly sports player and you went into a championship game, whether you want it or not, you get five votes, okay? And after listening to all these wonderful women calling into your station, Philadelphia women sports fans get four votes, okay? Now, Johnny Marks, you get three votes. Because you're like the Animal House guy, like, you know. What? Joel and B, you can't pick on you can't pick on our fans. Only I can pick on our you're fans. You're damn right, Tom. Herb in Northeast Philly. Herb. Oh boy. Yeah, what's up, Johnny Mark? Yeah, boy. What's up, Herb? And next time you talk to Larry Anderson, tell him about me. He knows who I am. He does? Uh, yeah. Well, whatever. Hold on. What am I going to say to him? Tell him Bobby Plumley. He'll remember. No. <laughs> Bobby He'll Plumley. Remember but, Bobby. Is your name Bobby Plumley? Yes. Oh, he's to catch in the bullpen. Tell him Bobby Plumley. Yeah, that's my boy. He used to hook me up with the tickets. Larry knows me. Oh. All right, Jack. Just text him now and say, "Say, do you know he Herb from Northeast Philly or Bobby Plumley?" He called me the smallest catcher. The smallest catcher. Okay. That's what he called me. But I still broke up the no hitter. I need to see the package. <laughs> I still broke up the no hitter one day. What no hitter? Sticky Knowles in the Pendel League. In- <laughs> yeah, you like that. <laughs> Herb, call, call, call tomorrow. All right, oh, we're man, out of time. I could have used you earlier today, Herb. Yeah. What is he talking? I have no idea what he was talking who about. Made, who made more sense in the last two minutes? Tom in Downingtown or Herb in Northeast? Herb. Well, at least Tom. No, t- no, t- no. Ty knew what Tom was getting at. I didn't. You did. I didn't. 
Well, I kind of know <laughs> what he was getting at. I had no at. damn clue what he was talking about. Uh, he's just, yeah, I mean, it's just, okay. Tell me off the air. <laughs> yeah, he was. Just, he was just saying that we had like we're we're, a, we're Philadelphia sports fans, and like what we say matters. What he doesn't, what what Embiid says doesn't matter. Oh, okay. We can criticize ourselves. He gotcha. can't criticize us. Okay, I think Tom. Com- Tom confused me. Coming up next, a four a full four hours of Joe Giglio, and he's oh. going to have to do his fantasy draft on the air while he's on the air. He's not calling out sick like Joe DeCamera thought he was going to have to. Everybody, we're talking to you tomorrow after yes. a little Phillies day game tomorrow. Get a win tomorrow. I'm glad you guys reminded me of this. And we'll, uh, well, you can still come in normal time, Mike. We're fine. <laughs> See you at 1230, pal. Everybody, be careful out there. We'll be careful, too. Be careful, Mike. On Pod Save the World, we want to be your cheat sheet for global events. My name is Tommy Vitor. And each week, my co-host Ben Rhodes and I break down the biggest stories from around the world. Ben and I both worked on President Obama's national security staff, and we'll introduce you to the activists, politicians, and journalists who can help us understand what's going on around the world, what it means for the United States, and what it's like being inside the White House Situation Room during a crisis. Listen on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your pods. The COVID-19 pandemic showed us how a microscopic virus could upend our lives. There is so much out there that we need to understand. But for every threat, there are heroes working at the edges of science and policy to protect us. I'm Dr. Abdul El Sayed, former Detroit Health Director and host of Crooked Media's America Dissected. Every episode, I talk to the doctors, scientists, culture makers, and policy leaders who are working out new ways to protect us against our biggest threats. New episodes of America Dissected every Tuesday. Listen on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. We are all on this planet together. So join Odyssey and find your one thing. While summer is a great time for recycling, some summer items should not be mixed in with your curbside recycling. Items like garden hoses, plastic planters, pool toys, squirt guns, and lawn chairs are generally not recyclable and are best donated to charity. If you have a question as to whether an item can be recycled, look for the recycling triangle and number, usually on the bottom of the product. Join Odyssey, and together, each of us doing one thing makes a greener tomorrow. What's your one thing?